aside from the little lick I tried to play at the end and screwed up, that's a, a song that we wrote together called Six Feet Deeper. But the best story about Six Feet Deeper is uh, <laughs> we go to Japan and we're do, we, we do our second show. And uh, we come to that song and it has that riff we just played. And rather than play that riff, I play a riff very similar, but it happens to be another one of our songs. And I went back and played the opening song. Since then, we start the song now with me playing the riff so we can, we can differentiate between the two just songs. so I can keep track. But if track. you played the opening of Elevate and yeah. I played Six Feet Deeper, what would happen? One, two. <laughs> That's what happened. Wow. Not, well, not horrible. It, it works, kind of works, works, but uh, but that's now not I don't know what, what song I play. I was either I was playing <laughs> Elevate or Six Feet Deep, and I can't remember the, the riffs. So uh, the Winery Dog record actually, uh, we we spent a lot of time just sitting in this room, throwing ideas around. This is, it. And, this is the room. Yeah, coming up with things. <laughs> and the thing I always talk about when uh, people ask about how we made the record is how really organic the process was. I mean, we literally came into this room and set drums up and set up amps and uh, just started throwing ideas around and, and, and it just kind of seamlessly went together. It wasn't really the hardest thing we had to do actually in the end was find a band name. That was the toughest thing of the whole process, <laughs> find a band name. One of the songs uh, was a song that was uh, actually kind of put together from two different pieces of music and, and it ended up being the opening song to the record which is Elevate. You want to try and play yeah. it? Uh, One, two, two, three, four. And there was a variation on the end that adds one more diddly to it. That's right. I think what I'm... For my yeah, last notes. There's an extra... last one two times. Yeah, you see exactly. this whole time I've been doing a different one. Really? Yeah, I swear yeah. to God. <laughs> now we're learning right in front of the public. And Finally. That's what happens out. though. When, you know, you write, you write songs and, and you work hard and you do stuff in the studio and then when you go to play it live, you got to go back and figure out what did I do? A part of the Elevate uh, line that we uh, sometimes forget to talk about is the actual... Which is, the, it's got that... Uh, which uh, I know initially I was starting to do that stuff like fret it, but you said no, bend it because, uh, and I'm glad I did. We got a couple of those in the record. Yeah, actually. absolutely. Where there's instead of the. And then suddenly, out of nowhere, I start screaming like a lunatic over an open power chord. <laughs> That's rock. That's how the song goes, exactly. And but then, then for me, it gets even more complicated because I got to figure out how to sing and play these rhythm parts at the same time. So, well, well, fortunately, a couple songs we're playing. You pull off the guitar completely. Yeah, like a, exactly. Like a, what's the? Uh... Fortunately, a little distorted tone bass, I can actually do just that line alone. If you don't happen to be in there, there's still enough. Yeah, I take advantage of that. He gives me a break a lot. It actually sounds like a guitar and a bass at the same time. Which is the idea uh, initially uh, that built this is uh, playing in a three-piece band, and now here we are again in a three-piece band. And you have a channel separated, too. It's two, two different. Two separate amps so completely. It really, it, it's not just putting a distortion on the bass. When you have the, the basics, sometimes it, it puts you more into the song. It, and true. less about this. And, yeah, exactly. And with the kind of music we're playing, it works out really well. 